Hey everyone, today I'm going to teach you how to use port view in the EV3's motor encoders to quickly program your FLL robot. Now, some of you that have been with me from the beginning may have noticed that I've covered this topic already, and before you grab your pitchforks and torches and storm my house, let me explain myself. I figured this was a really important topic that I didn't really sufficiently explain the first time around, which was more than a year ago. So I'm just going to make a new video on it that will hopefully be a lot clearer. So here we go. Alright, so here we are with our robot on our mat here. And yes, I do realize that my FLL mat is quite outdated. But anyway, this is a really simple example of what I'm going to show you. Uh, this is what I'm going to be teaching you today. Right here we have our Timmy Ton at the start and we want to go to this point over here at the finish. How do we know how long of a distance that is? Well, you can guess and check, which is going to take some time between too long and forever, or what we can do is we can come over here, we can open up the port view menu on the EV3, just like that, and that's going to display the encoder values in degrees, or if you prefer, rotations of the motors. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to measure the distance between our start and our finish line. To do this, you're going to take your robot and gently, carefully roll it across the mat. Now it's imperative that the wheels do not slip at all when you're doing this. As you'll notice, I'm turning my wheels by hand and I'm being very careful not to let the wheels slip. It's especially imperative if you have small wheels on your robot, as I do because a smaller wheel gives less of a mechanical advantage when you're rotating the motor. So it's even more difficult for a small wheel. Anyway, we're going to keep rotating it until we reach our desired point, which is right here. The next step is going to be to then read the degree value that we've measured in port view. And we see we have this degree value here, 1880. We have a second degree value, 1897. They're a little different, just choose one of these. I'm going to just stick with this one and program that for both of the motors. Now with the EV3 software open, we're going to make a program with the measurement we just took. Since we're just driving straight, we're going to have a move tank block. We're going to put it on for degrees because that's the unit we measured in. And what we measured was 1880 degrees. So I'll just type that in. And then you can have this at whatever power you want. And so that's our program for going from start to finish. Let's load it onto the robot and see what happens. So that was easy enough, but you're not always going to be driving in a straight line. So let's try something a little more challenging. This is the obstacle course that I've laid out here and we're going to have five actions. The start is here and the finish is over there. But to get there, we need to first drive straight to here, make a 90 degree left turn, drive straight again, make another 90 degree right turn, and then drive straight to the finish line. And this is a sequence of actions that an FLL robot might undertake because it needs to navigate around obstacles to get to its destination. So we're going to do this much the same way that we did before. You're going to open up port view, and we're going to record our distance for this first leg, which is the straightaway. And then once we get to that first part, we're going to record the distance. In this case, it's 1089 degrees. And the next part, since we're making a separate action now, a 90 degree left turn, you're going to back out of port view, and then go back in to clear it out to measure for the next action. Now for a 90 degree turn, what I find is easiest to do is to make a pivot turn around one wheel. So hold the inside wheel stationary as you rotate the outside wheel, just like this. And what you end up with is that value. Motor C is going to rotate about 360 degrees in this 90 degree left turn. So we'll store that value and the other motor is going to stay stationary. Again, we're going to move on to our next action, so we clear it out by backing out and then going back in. We're going to measure the straightaway now. We're going to measure both wheels because we're driving straight. Now we're at our destination. 
we had about 445 degrees on that one. Clear it out. Now we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're doing another 90 degree turn, but we're going to hold the right wheel stationary since that's the inside wheel and just rotate the left. And for a 90 degree turn, you should get about the same thing that you did as, as last time. So we'll say about 360 degrees for that. Clear it out one last time. And for our final leg, we're simply going to roll it straight to the finish. And that's the finish after 780 degrees. So now we have all of our measurements for all five legs of our journey and we'll now make a program and punch those values in and see how it works. So again we have opened the EV3 programming environment and we're going to make a program based on the measurements that we just took. And there are five actions so we're going to want five of these tank blocks and I'm going to change it to degrees first because we took our measurements in degrees. You could also do this in rotations but my recommendation is to use degrees. It's a little bit more precise. So we're going to need five of these That's five. And of course, put them end to end in sequential order. Just drop them in like that. And so here are our five move tank blocks. And we'll start by punching in the degree values that we measured. Our first action was just a straight line and we drove for 1089 degrees give or take if you're one degree off it doesn't really matter because the motors aren't accurate to one degree well they are accurate to one degree so one degree isn't going to make a difference and we can set this to 75 percent power we don't want to go too fast otherwise it won't be very accurate the next action is a 90 degree right turn and for that we measured 380 degrees but only the outside wheel is moving and that's the right wheel so we'll just stop the left wheel so we pivot around the left wheel the next action is again another straightaway for 445 degrees so we'll enter that in and it's straight so both motors are going to drive next we have a left 90 degree turn and just like the right 90 degree turn we're going to use 380 degrees but we're going to stop the opposite wheel since we're driving the opposite direction so the right wheel is stopped and then for the final leg of our journey we drive forward for 780 degrees. And that's our completed program. I'm going to download this back onto the Timiton and see how it does. Now just a few closing notes on using this technique. If you are going to use this technique, keep in mind that, as you probably saw in those last shots, it's not 100% accurate. It's all going to be dependent on how well you keep the wheels traction to the mat. If you slip, of course, your results aren't going to be very good. Your measurements are going to be off. And also, what size wheel you're using. I explained in a previous video all about slop distance and stuff, and how a taller wheel is going to make odometry less accurate. And so that's another factor that affects your accuracy. So after you get these measurements, uh, expect to do a little bit of playing around to get them just right, to get them where you need them to be. The other thing is odometry, as I'm showing here, is not always the preferred method for moving around the FLL table. It's nice when there are no other reference points around that you can use sensors, but I highly encourage that if there is a reference point, such as a line on the mat, or a wall or some kind of obstacle that you can see with a sensor anything at all that a sensor can pick up to use as a reference point use that to supplement your odometry because like I said odometry on its own is not 100 percent accurate thanks for watching my tutorial this week if you found it helpful be sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this every week and if you have an idea for a tutorial be sure to submit it in the comments section below thank you and I'll see you next time bye